This was the life of loud luxury. Raucous parties, DJing for thousands. Now the Juno winning duo is playing for these to stay connected with fans online. The lack of touring has taken a toll. In a huge way, because I mean, that, like I was saying, the last couple of years have been nonstop shows. I mean, we did our massive bus tour. I think it was like 90 shows or something like that. And if you won't cry. Rolling Stone called Montreal's Alison Russell one to watch. She also relied heavily on gigs to pay the bills. Then the pandemic wiped away three quarters of her income. And it really struck home when these walls came down was how precarious our existence was. You know, okay, it was like a month, we're fine. Two months, we're okay, we have enough. Three months, oh, how are we gonna pay rent? Part of the problem has been the shift from physical record sales to streaming services that simply don't pay enough. In order for me to earn an annual minimum wage of $30,000, I need to gain six million streams at the average royalty rate of half a cent per listen. That's unattainable. Then there's the question of where to play post-pandemic. According to the Canadian Independent Venue Coalition, over 90% of locations will not survive without government support. Fewer artists will get to play fewer shows for fewer people. So less creation of the kind of content that defines who we are as Canadians. While some say Ottawa needs to increase support, this composer is taking on Spotify, organizing a global action date to pressure Spotify to pay a penny for every stream. This argument is the initial version of like a minimum wage argument for musicians. And a way to ensure the next generation of voices will still be singing when the pandemic fades. Eli Glasper, CBC News, Toronto.